This video is to help you revise dormancy and germination of seeds. A separate video covered the fertilization events that took place in the ovule. In fact, it was double fertilization. There were two separate fertilization events. The first fertilization event resulted in the formation of the diploid zygote, which became the embryo plant with the second fertilization event resulting in the formation of that triploid endosperm. The walls of the ovule, otherwise known as the integuments, they become the testa, the outer coating of the seed. The endosperm absorbs the nucellus. Remember, the nucellus was made up of diploid cells that provided nourishment to the developing ovule. So the seed had been formed and the seed is found in the ovary of the flower, which eventually becomes the fruit. The fruit is going to aid in the dispersal of that seed. So let's go over the structure of the seed. The seed contains the embryo plant and there are three parts for your exam that you have to know. The plumule will eventually become the shoots of the new plant and the radical will eventually become the root of the new plant. The third part is the cotyledon and you can see the two cotyledons in this broad bean seed. You have to know the definition for a cotyledon. A cotyledon is an embryonic seed leaf. There are two categories of seed, the first of which are the endospermic seeds and the other group are the non-endospermic seeds. Non-endospermic seeds are those seeds that at maturity do not have an endosperm, so no endosperm. In non-endospermic seeds, the food is stored in the cotyledons. The food is passed directly from the cotyledons to the growing embryo plant. This broad bean seed is a dicot, it has two cotyledons and it has no endosperm, so it's termed non-endospermic. However, please be aware that there can be exceptions. There can be some dicot seeds that also have an endosperm. In contrast, those endospermic seeds do have an endosperm at maturity. In endospermic seeds, the food reserves are stored in the endosperm and from here the food is passed to the cotyledons and onwards to the embryo plant as it grows. Maize is an example of an endospermic seed and endospermic seeds tend to be monocots, they have one cotyledon. However, please note there can be exceptions. Please make sure that you can label a non-endospermic seed, such as the broad bean seed in yellow, and the maize seed, which is endospermic, seen here on the bottom. Mature seeds enter a period known as dormancy. This is a period of reduced metabolic activity, where the plant undergoes no growth. Dormancy generally commences with the dehydration of the seed, so the seed losing most of its water content. A seed remains dormant for many reasons, some of which include the presence of growth inhibitors and mostly down to having a very tough testa which is impenetrable to oxygen and water. Why is dormancy beneficial? Dormancy allows time for the dispersal of the seed. It also gives the embryo plant time to mature. It ensures that seedlings do not germinate during harsh weather and this increases their chance of survival. Some seeds will remain dormant for very long periods of time and this ensures that there's always a seed bank of this particular plant. How is dormancy eventually broken? Sometimes very cold, harsh weather can break dormancy. Also, soaking some seeds in water will break dormancy because it softens the testa. Physically breaking the testa by cutting it with a knife is another way of breaking dormancy. This allows water to enter the seed. Some seeds require exposure to light to break dormancy and other seeds require extremely high temperatures, for example in some countries that are prone to bushfires like Australia. Breaking the testa or softening the testa is a key feature in breaking dormancy, mainly because it allows water to enter the seed. The water is needed for the cytoplasm of those cells and also for the activation of the enzymes. This also allows oxygen to enter the seed and this is important because it's needed for respiration. Once that tough impenetrable testa has been softened and water and oxygen enter the seed, germination can then take place. You need to know a very precise definition for germination. It is the regrowth of the embryo plant following a period of dormancy and regrowth is essential. Germination requires three factors, the first of which is water, oxygen, and a suitable temperature. The water is essential because it's needed to activate enzymes within the seed and these enzymes are going to help in the breakdown of the food reserves. Seeds contain mostly starch. 
and enzymes known as amylases contained within the seed are going to be used to break that starch down. The starch will firstly be broken down into maltose, which eventually gets broken down to glucose, and that glucose is used for cell walls and for cellular respiration. The proteins in the seed, they get broken down into amino acids by proteases, and they're used for the formation of enzymes. Plants also contain lipids. The lipids will be broken down by those enzymes known as lipases into the triglycerides, and these will be used for the provision of energy. The oxygen is required for cellular respiration. Food is needed to provide energy, and this energy is released by means of aerobic respiration. A suitable temperature is required because all of the activities of germination are enzyme controlled, and these have an optimal range in which they work best, generally between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. When water enters a seed, it has many roles, one of which is the activation of those enzymes. Those enzymes are going to be used in digestion. Those proteins, starches and lipids found in the seed will be broken down into their subunits of amino acids, glucose and triglycerides, which will be used by that growing plant. Digestive activity in a germinating seed has a particular practical on your course and I've covered this in a separate video, so check that out. There are two modes of germination, the first of which is epigeal. This is when the cotyledons rise above the soil and they become photosynthetic. They can actually undergo photosynthesis. The second mode of germination is hypogeal, so the cotyledons stay below the ground, they shrivel, and it's the plumule that sprouts the first leaves. That was seeds and germination for the Irish Leaving Cert. Please use your book, please do past papers, and please watch the video on the practical looking at digestive activity in a germinating seed.